What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, Mike, to the channel. Welcome, Mike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. That is Noah. That is Michael. Make sure you're following them on Twitter. Make sure you are subscribed to the Bunk Bed Breakdowns channel on YouTube. They are putting out five beautiful pieces of Dynasty content every single day. I think they put out more content than I do now. I've created a monster, and I hate it. <laughs> they're, they're big enough to fire me. We're here to talk about week two. Week two, uh, we're going to continue doing the same kind of format of the show that we did last week, where it's just us kind of navigating through the week, things that we picked up and things that are happening in our leagues that we can give you like real life examples for and kind of just go with the flow conversation. I had a, I had a good time doing that. I think it was fun to kind of record that way. I feel like you guys probably got a lot of value of it because we hit a lot of different angles and different players and league formats and things like that. So uh, pertain to everybody. So for those of y'all that complain in the comments, we got one of these big ones for you. For the rest of y'all that show love, as always, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the intro, baby. All right. Listen, guys. It was a... <laughs> listen, it was a guys. <laughs> it was a fucking rough week. I mean, this was like, this was like when you when you when you get the boys together and you you head out to Vegas and you get some bottles of models on that. But then you know, six hours later, is like one of your boys lost his leg, another one of your boys is gone. I mean, it was a yeah, like one of your homies, you have no idea where he is. He lost his. Every time you're trying to call him, it goes straight to voicemail. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, what this uh, was. Saquon Barkley is the voicemail guy. Oh, yeah. Wait, did you guys see? Uh, did you guys see the the video that the counselor put up? No. Yeah, he, he was said he's too nuts. busy being a model. Yeah, he was he was uh, taking a big victory lap about how he how he called uh, Christian McCaffrey was going to get hurt this year because he's too busy being a model. Halfway through, he's like, "And I told you guys to draft Saquon Barkley over Christian McCaffrey, but you couldn't see the, the Saquon Barkley injury coming. I told you the C Mac injury was coming." So, <laughs> but he was going nuts about how he made the right call about drafting Saquon Barkley <laughs> over Christian McCaffrey. Well, he's a doctor, so I believe him. He's a psycho. He's a psycho. The only way I, I mean, that guy, I mean, he's definitely got some mental health issues, uh, 100%. Goes uh, without saying, yeah. He's, yeah, he's one of the boys you bring to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, uh, look, I mean, it was brutal. Like, this, I, I think this has been the most brutal year for injuries, like, ever. But not just, like, injuries, but, like, injuries to stars, right? Like, we didn't just lose Saquon Barkley. We lost Saquon Barkley. We lost Christian McCaffrey. We lost Michael Thomas. Like those are three of the lost top Tyrod three. Taylor. I mean, the list goes on. <laughs> <laughs> top three of the dynasty assets in that we have, right? And top three of the like three of the first round picks gone, yeah. just wiped out. Uh, and, and I think it's just like crazy that 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 happened. And you know, it kind of goes back to like I think you know Ray Ray tweeted this, but like NFL players are like creatures of habit, you know. And their their habit was disturbed this season because they didn't have any training. Well, they didn't have much training camp. There's no preseason. There's barely any contact football. And the fucking hamstring ACL snipers booze business is booming. So someone's down I mean, on the right now with an ACL tear. I could see it. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's Taysom Hill. It I is didn't, Taysom Hill. I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Just, uh, no, but for real. All right, listen. So if, if you're if you're this is a dynasty show, so if you own uh, if you own C Mac, obviously you're not doing anything with him because it's you know four, it's a yeah. high ankle sprain, four to six weeks. Um, I, there could be a little bit of concern. Snacks brought up the point today that if it ends up being on the longer side of that, six weeks or so, he comes back and you know the Panthers are like zero and eight, zero and nine by then. I I I'd put it at like a five percent chance that they shut him down for the year because that's just so long of a time period for C Mac to agree to do that. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I guess realistically, you're not really doing much with C Mac. But for Barkley, like. We, we us three are in a dynasty league together where I, I took Saquon at the 102 yep. and that league I also have like George Kittle and I have Kirk Cousins just put me up a fucking neg so I'm not looking I'm not I went against Scott this week he's in a rebuilding mode and I put up like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I put up like 45 points against him because my entire I had Julio going too so my my entire fuck you Mike I don't like how much you're laughing this episode I don't think I've said a word other than me like laughing so far <laughs> So, no, so in that league, Mike, I was actually going to see if uh, this, is a, this is a good co uh, topic of conversation right now because I'm looking 
uh, to see what I could do with Barkley. Like he's not necessarily someone I'm looking to sell, but yep. I want to yep. see what's out there in the waters. And obviously you're more on the rebuilding side yep. than anything else. And I'm like, is Barkley a guy that for you where your team is at? Like maybe we could do a little uh, trade negotiations live yeah, yeah. on air here. What no, do you I think mean, about I, Barkley? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to bullshit. Like I just put out an episode um, on this on Market Watch Mondays talking about Barkley and Dynasty and how to, how to deal with them. Okay. And like, obviously – you take like a bit of a discount, but like, I mean, Barkley's still Barkley, right? It's an ACL tear. It's not an Achilles. Uh, if it was an Achilles, I'd, I would change my tone a little bit, but it's an ACL tear. Um, and it's still like, a, he's still a top, you know, top three, top five running back, right? Like no matter what. So I'd say you'd still probably try and get something in that range. Like I actually don't have great running backs in that league, but dude, I was talking to Noah about this earlier. I hope Alvin Kamara like just gets, has a pretty muted, uh, muted week because I'm going to beat fucking animal. And I started, I started, Corey Clement in my running back position <laughs> put up a zero. <laughs> so if I feed Animal this week, I'm just going to screenshot and put that shit up on Twitter. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah, Animal's yeah, on a, a rough slide of things right now. Going to be owned to in E-Town. Going to be owned to and go fade me. And yeah. Yeah, so fucking Corey yeah. Clement. I mean, it depends what you think. Like, I, haven't, I don't remember that's your team, but I remember you drafted a pretty fucking baller team. So if you're, like, still really going for it, um, like, work some quarterback trades. Right? Like, I have, like, four quarterbacks. So probably yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, the quarterback. You know, we we talked about it a little bit on Fade the Public. Like, if I'm if I'm looking to move Barkley, it's either going to be for a shitload of picks, or it's going to be for a guy like DeAndre Swift or uh, J.K. Dobbins, and then probably plus some because you know the team that's getting them that has those guys is probably not looking to compete right off the rip. But like, I already have DeAndre Swift, so I like the pieces of my team a lot. But without a guy like Saquon, I don't know that I'm a, a competitor really for the championship anymore. So at this point, it's like I can keep them, but like I don't know. You know, you have to look at it, Saquon. Do we get the full Saquon back in one year or do we not get Saquon Saquon for another year and a half or two years? And it's like, it becomes a messy situation because now he's a guy who continues to get injured. Is he going to be plagued for his career for, mm -hmm. you know, this stuff? And um, I, I don't know. Like, that's why, I don't know. It's just like a, a crazy conversation to have right now with all the injuries going on. I the mean, other thing that worries like, me, too, is, like, do we even know Daniel Jones is going to have a job past, like, 2021, 2022? <laughs> this guy is not good in real life. He turns the ball over way too much, and I know he's had a few tough matchups, and he's got a few more uh, coming soon, but he hasn't, met, like, really been good at football since that first game where he got thrown in against the Bucks. Yeah, I, uh, I, I asked Snacks this question, too, because he was like, what happens if, you know, the Giants go – the Giants and the Jets, both New York teams, like, if they're top five picks, top three picks – like, do they pass up quarterbacks? And he, he's trying to be objective about it. He, he actually does like Daniel Jones. And I think it's still too early to really put the feeler out on DJ in this sense because, you know, he, like Josh Allen, we knew he was going to have a really big start to the year. Maybe not as, as big as it is, you know, up to this point. He's looked really fucking good. Uh, and then DJ on the flip side, right? We knew his schedule early season was going to be really, really tough. So eventually, like, we'll be able to even out those bumps and see where these guys actually stand in real life. Uh, so I'm, I'm confident that DJ will be serviceable enough given the weapons around him. Um, but I, I don't know, like Bar I, I'll be honest. I'm a little bit hesitant about, about Barkley situation. Say, say you're in like a startup draft. Um, obviously wouldn't be drafting like right now, but like Barkley has to start going behind those tier one, tier two guys. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I mean like you have a full season of production. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Like, okay. Let me, <laughs> let me rattle off some names for you then. Like, obviously you're going to take, uh, you're going to take Z, uh, C Mac. You're going to take Kamara. You're going to take Zeke. You're going to take, um, will you take Dalvin cook over Barkley? I'm assuming. That's yeah. a tough one. That's a tough one. I'll, uh, take, I'll take Cook. It is close, though. Yeah, that's a, that's the, a close the extension, one. The extension that Cook got puts puts him ahead of me. Puts yeah, yeah. Him ahead. Yeah. Okay. I'll um, take JT. The rookies, yeah. H, JT. Easily. Uh, what about Sanders. the Sanders? Jacobs and Sanders. Jacobs and I Sanders. I would as yeah. I think the yeah. Sanders-Barkley dichotomy is, like, almost where you're starting to teeter yeah. on the borderline of, like, where you want to go. Because then it gets, like, I would take Barkley over Chubb. I would take Barkley over – mix in but it's like it hurts so bad it's like i don't want to use my first round pick on a guy that i'm not yeah. gonna be able to use for a whole fucking year like that's yeah, where it, it starts it getting bad. weird you know the thing that sucks yeah. too I is mean, like you're gonna be on the board and you're gonna see miles sanders and saquon barkley and you're not gonna pick miles sanders either and you know it's like the right pick to take miles sanders probably <laughs> yeah um i to see fucking miles sanders back on back on the field though this week man yeah. uh I'll, I'll be honest like if someone that pushed him so hard this offseason I was nervous that we were going to get like a really hesitant week one where they only gave him like 11, 12, 13 touches and he wasn't going to be efficient with it because I figured the Rams D line would kind of blow him up. And I, I rewatched the game. Uh, I rewatched it this morning <clears throat> uh, and he looked good. Like after the first couple of, yeah, I think he had some jitters in the beginning where, um, where he fumbled the ball, you know, and he was getting hit in the backfield a little bit. But after that, he started, you know, grinding out good yards. He was getting targeted in the passing game a lot. Carson Wentz looked absolutely oh. fucking abysmal. Oh. And I, 
they lost another offensive lineman. So um, I, the overall team situation is scary, but I mean, 27 fucking opportunities. I, like I'm here for that on Sanders. Yeah. I mean, he had what? 77%, 80% snaps. So he's, he's all he is a bell. He is a bell count now, I guess mm-hmm. from, for all intents and purposes, he is dominating the workload on the ground. He's getting goal line looks. He's getting targets. So, I mean, look, I bought into Sanders not because I thought he's like hella, hella talented, but I thought the situation was fantastic. Right. Um, but the situation isn't as fantastic because the O-line's hurt and Carson Wentz looks like, looks like fucking Andy Dalton out there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but at the end of the day, like you're still getting the volume, you're still getting the targets, you're getting the high value touches. And like Eagles, are, they're still not like the Red, Washington Redskins, you know what I mean? So, or, or sorry, the Washington football team. So I think, you know, he, he's going to be up there and he's young, he's athletic. The only worry I have is like he like retweaks his hamstring. That's like yeah, my, that was my it. And like this answer. game, I, if, I, I felt like <clears> if it was going to happen, it would have been this one. And if it's not next game, then I feel really good about him going forward. Yeah. yeah the only thing that concerns yeah. me at all about Sanders, and I know like it's hard to project four weeks out into the future because we've seen how many running backs have gone down recently, but he gets a three game slate of the 49ers, the Steelers and the Ravens, which he's not going to have much room to run at all. So if that's like a buy low window for you, go for it. Cause after that he gets the giants, the Cowboys, the giants, the Browns, the Seahawks, the Packers. So it's a pretty easy mm, slate after that. Beautiful. And the fact that he's getting as many touches as he's getting, and he did pretty well. I believe he had over 100 yards from scrimmage. He scored a touchdown against a pretty solid Rams front seven. I think you can have, like, all the confidence in the world about Miles Sanders because, like, the common narrative other than him being injured was the fact that he was going to be in a committee and Boston Scott was going to work his way into the offense. That's not happening. He got, like, 71% yeah. of the opportunities and, like, 77% snap share. So I have no worries about him being the lead back in this offense, even if it's not a great offense. There aren't many situations like what Miles Sanders is exposed to. He was the, the, the more important <clears throat> stuff was like the snaps are great. And I think we all kind of knew he was going to get the early down work just because they had, they have no one even like close to his size. He took all like the third down work and he took all the goal line work too. So it's like, there's really nothing left for Boston Scott to contribute besides a couple of like plays here and there. So I, I was super happy about the whole Miles Sanders thing this week. How do you guys feel about Kenyon Drake? I know it's kind of like a similar situation. They're in a better offense. Obviously he's getting a big work workload, but I know I said it to you guys, like he just doesn't look good to me. And he has faced two really good uh, defensive lines in the Washington Redskins and the seven, or the Washington football team and the San Fran 49ers thus far. Um, but I do think he's like a decent buy low candidate because even though Massive he hasn't looked by low, number one by low right now. Yeah. He hasn't looked good, but he's had a tough schedule. He gets a very easy schedule over these next two weeks and he's getting all the opportunity in a high-scoring offense. And Kyler Murray has taken all the rushing touchdowns away from him so far. I'm not so sure that's sustainable. Obviously, he's great on the ground, but I just don't see a world where Kenyon Drake is held scoreless, especially when he's got the goal line role. Yeah. Ky- Kyler Murray's not going to score from 20 into 40 yards out on, on rushing touchdowns every week. Uh, like I had someone like message me being like, hey, do I sell Kenyon Drake? Uh, Kyler Murray's like vulturing all of his TDs. I'm like, what TDs, man? Like They were not really <laughs> – he didn't have many goal line opportunities, and when they did, he got it. Um, so – Look, Kyler Murray, man, fucking incredible. I, I, I undersold how good this kid is. He's he takes like a incredible. million steps to go 10 yards, but he just gets by everybody. It's ridiculous. He's so fast. Dude, he's just like chopping up. Yeah, he's it's like, like, a it feels like it's like someone's yeah. doing video editing and they're like, they take just <laughs> Kyler and put him in fast forward and everyone <laughs> yeah. else is staying in the same speed. And yeah. Like, Dude, it's like, holy yeah, shit. He looks like a fucking garden gnome, man. Like he's so small. <laughs> yeah, like, he looks so like a miniature. running garden gnome. And it's, it's, and never, plus I got to support him. He's half Korean. So I got to support the Asian homie. Is he really? But yeah, he's looking he's incredible. Yeah. Korean? He's the only that. fucking Asian person in the league that's not a kicker. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Guy. So, so back, back to, back to Kenyon Drake though. Like, I mean, the way they're using him, you know, we people got excited about Chase Edmonds after week one, but realistically, like, Kenyon Drake got 18 touches, and now he got 22 touches in week two. Like, this this Cardinals team is way – they're 2-0 and already. Like, they're, they're way better than a lot of people are expecting them to be. They're going to have a defense that's going to keep them in games and keep Kenyon Drake on the field. I mean, he's not a player that's going to be phased out of any game. Like, that's the good part about him. He's yeah. a three-down skill set guy. So, there will be times when Chase Edmonds gets 10 touches, but it's not going to – Look at how many – they ran 82 plays in week one. I think they ran 77 or 78 or something in week two. Like, they are the fastest-paced team in the NFL right now, and they're winning. They're going to continue to do it. Like you said, like, he hasn't been the most efficient, but that's at San Francisco. It's against the Redskins front seven, which is, like, lethal. They're not letting up anything to any of these running backs. What I guess might be a little bit more concerning is the lack of uh, involvement in the passing game, right? Two for two – or two, two targets, two receptions, five yards in week one two targets, two receptions, nine yards in week two. Like, that was a big part of his game last year. Uh, But maybe, you know, Kyler running the ball a little bit more this year, feeling more comfortable, throwing a fucking, you know, a ton of looks 
uh, towards D Hop over there. So I, I don't I don't know what you guys think about like maybe the game script gets better in terms of worse for the Cardinals, but better for Drake in the passing game. What I see is like, he hasn't scored a touchdown yet, or he hasn't, you know, looked great in that area of the field. Like they're not giving him a lot of ops. So he feels like a really good buy low to me. Guess who he yeah. plays these next two weeks. The Detroit Lions who Aaron <laughs> Jones just absolutely murdered and the Carolina Panthers who every running back has murdered. Like Leonard Fournette had a 40 yard touchdown against them. If you let up a 40 yard <laughs> touchdown against Leonard Fournette, you necessarily have to be a terrible run defense. He's going to tear him up. And as you were saying, Nick, with the passing game involvement, I don't have the passing blocking snaps in front of me, but every time I watched them play, it seemed like he was out there as an extra offensive lineman, just picking up a guy coming off the edge or through the middle. Maybe that has to do with the type of pass rushes that they are facing and the fact that they're about to play Detroit and Carolina is going to help him to get more involved in the passing game. But uh, he is a good receiver. That's basically all that they used him for in Miami for some reason. So I have no hesitation to say, to think that he's going to end up with like 50, 60 receptions on the season, even though he's starting off slow in that department. Yeah, so let me uh, – in one of my leagues, I actually offered this trade earlier today. I, I was sending out Terry McLaurin, TJ Hawkinson, Corey Davis for – Kenyon Drake and Latavius Murray. And we actually, Monday Night Football is on right now. And uh, apparently Snacks texted me, said that Kamara kind of walked off gingerly. So there might be something going on with Kamara. He's looked fantastic tonight. Uh, whoops, yeah, he's done. Was fun while it lasted. Uh, okay, so it seems like Kamara, I guess. Like that was that was one of my concerns for Kamara going in. He had that, that epidural shot in the back and everyone's like, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. But like every doctor was like, yeah, that's just like a short-term thing covering up probably a longer-term problem. Uh, and I don't know how serious the injury is. We could see reports like tomorrow where, you know, he's, he's well, fine. Well, did you ask but... the, cou the counselor if he was going to get hurt this year? <laughs> he predicted it, so it has to be 100% accurate. Yeah, come on. Kamara's off the field for the year. And that is uh, – and now I have to kind of recalculate that trade because that person's never going to accept with Latavius Murray being the, the second piece of it. But it was uh, basically like, you know, I was giving away Terry – and Hawkinson for like Kenyon Drake and for me I think like I have a lot of wide receivers on that team and uh, I think that's probably around fair value for where the public kind of sees both of those guys like Terry coming off this big game Drake's yep. been a little like lackluster from an efficiency standpoint yep. but those are the kind of trades I would look to, to make if, if you did pound the wide receivers rounds like three through seven you didn't get one of your running backs that you wanted early like I think Drake's a really good buy low in that spot yeah. yeah, I mean you gotta chase opportunity like t t touchdowns will come this offense is super high volume uh, I think honestly that maybe the target volume isn't as high as we thought it would be last year. Like he was getting like 10%, 13% target share. Um, but I'd say like, you know, he's still probably well within reason of getting like, you know, 30 to 40 catches uh, plus goal line work plus like all the groundwork. I think he's a he's pretty locked and loaded RB1. So anytime you can make a move like that, I think it's a good one. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people like, teacher, come into my DMs asking about <laughs> buying Kenyon Drake. Some guy just said, should I trade away Chris Godwin and Hayden Hurst for Kenyon Drake and Deontay Johnson? If those are the type of offers that you're getting out there, extreme buy lows, and then getting a Deontay Johnson who looks to be a great breakout candidate, we can go talk about him later if you guys want. If you can get that type of offer just because people are wary about him having like 90 scoreless yards through two weeks, just go for it because he's getting the opportunity on a good offense. Like, what more do you want? Dude, yeah. I'm pretty sure Deontay is like actually the alpha there in, in Pittsburgh now. Like, he's balling. He's balling. Juju, like, he scored the two touchdowns in week one he didn't look like anything special. There were just plays where he was kind of running across the middle and he was open. Like he's Juju. He's a good player, but uh, I think they've needed someone on the outside. That's a legitimate separator and field stretcher and, and playmaker. And like, man, people went back and forth saying Deontay Johnson is like an Antonio Brown version. You know, he's like a light version of him. And people are like, don't compare him to Antonio Brown, but like, it's really what it is, man. Like he plays a very similar style of game where he can get open on his own and you could target him down the field. You could target him pretty much anywhere and he could be a possession guy. And we're seeing him, I think his, his, his target share on that team is over like 31 30. or 32. Yeah. Like 30% yeah. right now. And I mean, if big Ben's coming back and targeting him at this high of a pace uh it's it's pretty good to see and they're throwing the ball a lot there in Pittsburgh now I, I know James Conner that kind of came back and had a big game but um this looks like a Deontay Johnson breakout campaign for sure yeah he's he's doing he's doing good I mean Deontay Johnson doing good is also good for Juju like Juju cannot handle outside role at all and he needs someone to actually pull that coverage right uh so Deontay Johnson being there is good like Chase Claypool actually looks a lot better than I thought he ever would um, making some making some deep plays. Not sure how how will they get involved in like the intermediate game, uh, or at least for fan, fan, for like fantasy purposes, like how reliable it'll be. But you look pretty good. Like having those field structures there is gonna be good for the offense. They, I mean, their entire fucking O line is like on IR. So 
Uh, that's not going to be good for the running game. Uh, probably not ideal for the passing game either, but hopefully it, it leads to more higher volume passing uh, passing game script. So, yeah, DeAndre Johnson is definitely having a good breakout. Uh, he started off pretty cold though, right? I mean, like the fumbled, like the fumbled, um, what was it, like kickoff or, or, or punt or something like Hard that? Return, then, yeah, but he's definitely been picking it up and, you know, hopefully he stays healthy. That's like that's like the main concern there with him. But if he stays healthy, the Pittsburgh offense is rolling. Um, I mean, his wheels up. Yeah, 23 targets over his first two weeks. Two of his next three games are against pretty big pass funnels in Houston and Philadelphia. So it, the sky's the limit for this kid. I mean, we were all like pretty big fans of him coming into the season. I know there was like all those models and metrics speaking about how he's going to break out this year because he had 600 yards in like 12 games or whatever. But he legit looks the part of like a wide receiver one. He's like, I guess kind of like a Stefan Diggs where he's not built like a wide receiver one, as you would expect, but he's really good at separating and he's extremely good after the catch. And if we want to talk about Stefan Diggs and like the most underrated wide receiver one, a one B combination in the NFL, it might be what the bills have going on right now, because those guys just get open. They're very fast, which is I've heard is pretty good for a wide receiver to be. And Josh Allen actually looks good because I know he's had two very easy matchups, but his guys are just always open. He just got to hit him in stride. And that's what he's been doing so far. Yeah. Dude, Josh like, Allen. Did we get out? Did everyone get out on Stefan Diggs too early in Dynasty? Like, did we fuck up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Or, or I mean, are we like, or is it too early into the season with these really good matchups? Because Diggs has looked fucking, Diggs and Allen have looked like the real deal. Yeah. I Diggs, feel like Diggs every single year puts up like 300 yards for the first two weeks and then does nothing until week nine again. So we can be like a little bit wary, but he just, that connection looks legit. Diggs has never been, like, talent has never been an issue with Diggs, right? It's always been like volume, uh, and, and, like in, in Minnesota. Like, the one time he did get volume, like, he put up a wide receiver one season. And, like, he always smashes, like, easy matchups, though. Like Yeah, he does. Every he's time, like, guys. if he's off the injury report and he has an easy matchup, you can basically lock him in for, like, a top five wide receiver performance. It's, like, that's always digs. Like, he's, he's boom bust, but he's so predictable in his boom busting. And, like, you know, I, it's, like, dude, I've been hating on Josh Allen for a while because, like, I didn't think he's very good. Uh, but I was thinking about it, like, you know, it was kind of like the same story arc as Lamar Jackson last year. Everyone's like, oh, Lamar Jackson sucks. He can't pass. Uh, like, all he, all he does is rush. Obviously, I'm not trying to compare Josh Allen to Lamar Jackson as a, as a rusher. Uh, but, like, very same story arc. Like, they both started off blazing hot against, like, pretty weak opponents. But, like, I think at the end of the day, you're still playing an NFL team. And when you dominate to that degree, like, I'm still going to give credit where credit is due. And I think, like, Josh Allen is absolutely balled out. And I underestimated – the effect that having Stephon Diggs would actually have on him. And, like, if we look at, like, the way they're using him, he's he's using them, like, much more in, like, the intermediate range because, like, Diggs can work. He's a deep ball specialist as well, but he can definitely work the short and intermediate. So him having Diggs as that outlet option has been pretty fucking huge. And Diggs is a beast when it comes to contested catches. So Josh Allen doesn't even have to be, like, that accurate. He kind of just has to put in the vicinity. So I think they're a pretty good – Pretty good match. Um, I'm excited to see what happens if, if Stephon Diggs stays healthy. Like he he could be in line for a you know high wide receiver two, low wide receiver one season pretty easily. I don't even think Diggs is the reason why they're passing so much. I think it's because Zach Moss is so bad on the ground that they have no <laughs> other option. I mean, he's averaging like two yards of carry out there. Yeah. Did anyone retweet? Uh, anyone retweet that that tweet of the um, when Ball Blast was like, oh you, oh you guys would take these guys over Zach Moss, but he had six fantasy points when the rest of them at like that was just such an ignorant fucking tweet i wanted people to like retweet over like quote tweet it that's what you, that's that's the right yeah. fucking terminology for we should go back and do that afterwards but like digs man i'm pissed because like beginning of the off season or when that trade happened i remember the bunch the first bunch of pods i did like i was everyone was like shitting on it and i was like dude i feel like this is I remember I'm, I might go back and fucking pull a bunch of clips and chop it up and shit. But I was like, this is the first time Diggs is like going to be the alpha in his offense. Like the, regardless of quarterback or regardless of what, you know, the other situation around it, like he's always had Thielen there who's operated as the alpha, no matter who's on the outside or who's on the inside. I was like, Diggs could just roll into 130 or 140 targets, right? And just be the alpha because yep. he's the most talented guy on the field at any time in, in that Bill's offense. Uh, and then I moved away from it. Like the more I thought about Josh Allen and I was like, ah, you know what? Like, this is not going to be good. We'll see if they can kind of like mesh together again. It's a, it's a, it's a wide receiver going over to a new team, but like, this looks awesome. I, I also don't want to get too far ahead of myself because this is something everyone said. We're like, Josh Allen's going to be really good for the first half of the year. And uh, we'll see when they start playing some really good, um, some really good matchups. But like John Brown, <laughs> respect to fucking John Brown, man. All he does is, all he does Smoking. is take the haters and fucking eat off that shit. He's, he's just a baller on the outside. Brown, 
Diggs. Uh, who else? I mean, speaking of Diggs leaving, this was the, the reason I was nervous about fucking Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, man. Like, <laughs> they got nothing besides Adam Thielen. And their time of possession in week one was like 18 minutes. Their time of possession this previous week was like 21 minutes. They don't have the ball ever. Like, Kirk looked so bad. This team legitimately might be in the running for one of the top quarterbacks, too. Like, what do you do with the Vikings pieces right now? Dude, it's, it's uh, the bags. So I don't know if they're going to be able to pick one. What'd yeah, you say? I mean, oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, they 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 paid him, uh, and like he has a lot of guaranteed money. I don't know, man. It's a, it's a tough one. Like that was just like one of the worst, one of the worst games I've seen. I think like eventually they're going to have to lean on the pass more. Uh, even, granted, like Chris Kirk Cousins like suck shit. Like I actually really like Kirk Cousins all offseason. I thought him and Tannehill were like pretty decent values, and he put up like what like negative nineteen points and Scott Fishbowl, <laughs> which is absolutely <laughs> brutal. Mm-hmm. But like. This defense stinks. Like they they cannot stop anyone. So bad. And they ran into an offense in the Colts that all they want to do is pound the rock. Like no matter what, just feed JT, feed JT, feed JT. Like eventually, like when I looked at the reason why I liked them a lot is because their strength of schedule has people with like pretty weak defenses, but like really high end offenses. So they're gonna have to keep up in scoring, and then they're gonna let Kirk sling it. And I think I think eventually this is gonna come around, and it's gonna be good for Thielen. It's gonna be good for Kirk Cousins. Uh, I'm actually still in on this offense, uh, to be honest, surprisingly, even after that abysmal performance. I just think, like, game script's going to dictate it to the point where, like, they can no longer, like, try and establish the run uh, the way that they've been doing, and they can't be as slow place as they have been. So I'm still in on Thielen. I'm still in on Kirk. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Dude, I swear my brain is wired in, like, such a terrible way. I see the Vikings, and I see the Tennessee Titans, and I just think, oh, tough matchup, tough defense. They go out there, and the, the Titans let up, like, 30 points to Gardner Minshew. These guys let up, like, 28 to Phillip fucking Rivers. They're not good defenses. Neither of them are good defenses. But just touching on what the Colts did, they fed JT the Rock like he was a second-round pick coming out of Wisconsin, putting up 6,000 yards. He's the guy there. Naheem Hines. There was Stinks. one – there was one unnamed fantasy outlet that said that Naheem Hines would outscore Austin Eckler the rest of the season. Can't do that again one touch a game. And Jonathan Taylor, who said that? Dude, the Austin uh, I'll, I'll just Eckler, say you had him on a, a business interview type of thing. I, I mean, I had a, I had like everybody on that shit. I, I had everyone from the good to I've had everyone from like the footballers to Mike Tags to fucking the counselor. So like, you got to be more specific on that. Probably the footballers. Uh, he's very good at building. Uh, a media network and his last name is a condiment <laughs> okay fair <laughs> fair continue uh, um, that's all i got really and ty hilton also like doesn't like catching touchdowns he just drops one a week so you can pencil that in i'm not <laughs> interested in many people in this passing game i guess michael Pittman in dynasty is like looking up because they have no other guys to throw to and he's on the field a lot but i mean if you're catching passes from philip rivers you're really not catching passes dude Paris Campbell going down was was brutal. I actually had Paris Campbell in my made a last second switch to put him into my DFS lineup because I thought it was a good value. Of course, he it was a, he was a good play this week. By he was a great play. It was a, it was a funnel. Uh, it's a run. It's a pass funnel. I'm I'm gonna start everyone against the Minnesota Vikings. They fucking stink. Great great Man. play this week if you wanted to lose money. You want they to lose money. fucking stink. Minnesota, yeah, thirtieth in pace in terms of neutral game script. So it's like their defense is terrible. And when they get the ball, they have no urgency. <laughs> like that is the that is the cocktail to make a terrible, terrible team right now. They have the pieces. At least they have some skill players yeah. to to make it look pretty. Some games, but yeah. um, Thielen is a guy that I'm not I'm not shopping. I'm definitely like on board with you there. I mean, eight targets in the first game, eight targets in the second game, uh, and we saw what he could do with eight targets in the first game. So he'll have his ups and downs just based on the team kind of being shitty. But he'll continue to be the alpha there yeah. for uh, for most of the season. What about uh, Mo Ali Cox, man? Fucking basketball players playing tight end, man. A tail as old as time. <laughs> Five catches for 111 yards. I don't know about you guys. When I was watching him, it looked like he was running in fucking slow motion. I had no idea how he was putting up numbers because it looked like he looked like he was running in glue. So I mean, he runs a 4'8". So <laughs> yeah. He's not very fast. I like uh, Mo Ali Cox is a guy that I'm not really about to give too much airtime because like <laughs> if you sprinkle out like the Mo Ali, the Mo Ali Cox airtime over the last like four or five years of doing <laughs> fantasy football, it's it's way more that he's more airtime time than like <laughs> career receiving yards he has yeah. in the nfl so like i don't fuck ali cox yeah i'll see how uh, old he is so I feel like he's, yeah he's 27 i was about to say he's like sneaky 30 because it seems like he should have been breaking out for the past five years he's like the new and improved vance mcdonald and he finally had a 100 yeah. yard game and everybody's like <laughs> themselves on the back jack doyle is jack doyle hurt 
Uh, he was hurt, yeah. He was hurt, okay. And Trey Burton's on Trey the Burton. IR, right? I mean, Trey Burton, Trey Burton hasn't stepped on the field in forever, so. Yeah, but, like, Trey Burton might low-key be better than Molly Cox. So. Maybe, I don't know. But I, don't know. Yo, I know but Darren the, Waller is better than fucking all of them right we, now. He's just laying wood. We, <laughs> Darren Waller, remember, remember when people started fading Darren Waller because they drafted two fucking rookie wide receivers? He was too good. I was just like, you it guys are Jason just like, you, you never know. People just make make dynasty and make fantasy so much harder than it has to be. This guy has had one of the best seasons ever. He's an athletic fucking freak. He's like he's going to be the team's top receiver again. But before we're talking about Waller, we talked about this last week. Jonathan Taylor versus Clyde Wizzler. We love to see the fact that they are now have equal footing. I think you know week one, Clyde Wizzler jumped out in front with his massive workload and a couple touchdowns. Week two, we saw it, man. Jonathan Jonathan Taylor, workhorse in college, never got hurt. Durable workhorse in the NFL. And you're seeing that translate. CH was still getting some volume. He actually got a pretty beautiful uh, catch pulled back because of penalties. Uh, so I got that got taken off the board, but it was actually a really nice play by him. So I don't know where, where are you guys at. Where are you guys at in this like CH versus Jonathan Taylor uh, type of thing? After seeing Jonathan Taylor in his in his uh, new role as the workhorse for Indianapolis Colts, they have been flipped. I put out two tweets tonight where I said uh, if I was doing a, a rookie draft starting today. Here are my top 12 picks, and I did one for redraft, and I had Taylor above CH in both of them. I had CH above Taylor just because I this was going to be CH's season for redraft, and again, I value the year that we're in a little bit more than JT, but like JT's got, you know, he, he, JT is what we thought he was going to be in 2021, but like right now, and yeah. what this weekend was was not like a product of game script or like some kind of fluky touch split or whatever. Like this is what we're going to get from JT weekend. I, I get like a million trade questions a day about JT and I'm just like, I see JT and I'm just like, yes, like that side. <laughs> there's nothing that there's almost, I think, I think I had JT as either the one Oh four or the one Oh five. If I'm doing a redraft league right now, there's um, it was uh, Zeke Kamara Henry, and then maybe JT right there at one Oh four. I'm like, there's, there's almost no players that I would take <laughs> over Taylor. I mean like what 30 touches now, like yeah. that's going to be like a normal weekly thing for him. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I'm not even sure I want Derrick Henry over him. And I know that's like common narrative for me to say, but <laughs> he, he hasn't looked good. Derrick Henry has gotten all the touches in the world and that offense is still efficient, but he hasn't looked good. And I, I don't think we should just like brush over that point. I think it might be the O-line, man. The O-line is a yeah. little bit of a concern because they were like good really hit. good at run blocking. And then they lost, uh, who they, they lost, Conklin, uh, Baffle. Conklin. And then, and then their first round pick, like got hurt and then I'm pretty sure got like a DUI like last week or two weeks. So like the tackle that was supposed to take over for him is not really in there making an impact. And the uh, uh, Tannehill's look great. And Mike, I, I took him in E-Town get down because of you as like my second QB and he's been absolutely fucking murking it for Smashing. me. Um, yeah, but, but it's came at like the detriment of – Henry's getting the volume obviously and he's going to continue to. But like this is also kind of how he started off last year but the opposite how he was just like scoring on the one yard line like 40 <laughs> 42 times a game and now he's not getting any of those so I, I do think we will still see Derrick Henry probably finish with like double digit touchdowns so I'm not really worried about it but like JT like we just need we're gonna get one of those runs from JT soon we're gonna get one of yeah. those 75 yard breakout runs and it's just like and it's over and then and then the one-on-one conversation start up you know what I mean like that's yeah. all we're waiting for for that shit to happen yeah, yeah. and on the he's flip side of the Tennessee play. game can we talk about Gardner Minshew just being an absolute boy? I tweeted out that if he's not a top 15 quarterback, I'm going to get a mullet. I think he was a top 15 quarterback. I'm getting a mullet either way, and I'm trying to grow <laughs> a mustache. It's real, it's real suspect right now. Yeah, this guy's a fucking animal, and I love watching this team. If you were to ask me at any point in my life if I was excited to watch the Miami Dolphins play the Jacksonville Jaguars on Thursday Night Football, you would think I would be crazy to say yes. <laughs> at this point, that might be like the best game of the season. I just can't wait to see. <laughs> it this. might be the best game of the season. <laughs> Calm down. Next time we're going to fucking turn the video thing on, you're going to be in a fucking trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this is a green screen. You don't know what's going on back here. <laughs> yeah, Dolphins, dude. Dolphins, Jacks, Thursday Night Football. That should be an interesting game. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we said it from the from the jump. Like, everyone is always overconfident in their own ability to project something, and everyone projected Jacksonville Jaguars to get Trevor Lawrence. And we said, what happens? What happens if Gardner Minshew is better than people expect? And what has he been? Better than people expected. Where so did you good. get him? You drafted him in Dynasty, at least. He was drafted as if he was going to be a one-year rental. So we said, look, there is literally zero downside to this. He's already getting drafted as four. On the off chance, he outplays himself and gets, gets like a good contract. Like Then you get a Dynasty QB. And that's what he's done. He's playing himself into a job. He has nothing to lose. Like it, it, There's no reason for them to like if – they, if they still like kind of suck – or not suck, but like are mediocre and have like a higher end pick. They can trade out. Like they have so many other assets to fill, and they can have an undrafted free agent at quarterback for basically fucking free. 
and they can have the god undrafted free agent James Robinson at running back. This dude has been balling out. If if you had if Cam Akers put up the stat line that James Robinson put up in the first two weeks, how People much do you think Cam Akers would would, would, would cost? Man, yeah. ball blast would cost you that, multiple. Ball blast would be a good way to, to think about it. <laughs> Bro, to, to be honest with you though, like, ah, fuck, I'm pissed about the Acres getting injured though, because I was I rewatched that game and he was the he was the starter. He was there on the first drive. He got like three or four solid runs in a row. Yeah. He got the carry inside the ten yard line, and that's when he when he got that rib injury. And now yeah. it's going to be it opened things up for obviously Brown and, and Henderson to kind of pop off a little bit. Um, and I felt like that that was the mojo Acres needed to like get the rookie yeah. season going a little bit, and that took it out. So now it's gonna you know it's it, gonna it, suck. It's, it sets him back a little bit. I think it's going to be a pain tolerance thing with him, and he's probably going to be limited to like 25% of the snaps for the next couple of weeks, which yeah. which uh, peels it back. But, yeah, that's a great way to it's a great way to look at it because, you know, once the season starts kicking in, like ADP goes out the door and you can't – you do have to – prospect-wise, there are a lot of things that you still have to take into account. Like uh, that tweet I put out when I was like redoing the top 12 rookie draft picks, I put Akers at like the 1-0 – eight or 109 or something and someone's like you still have acres in the first round and I was like listen his size his speed his athleticism his draft capital not going anywhere he looked fine and they clearly want to make him the guy but like and then Noah you obviously like ironically I like, tweeted out under it you're like James Robinson being disrespected or whatever I'm like would you honestly though would you take James Robinson with a first round rookie pick no right no I wouldn't you don't All have faith, those guys you don't have faith in him like being the like the guys on top no, yeah, no, it's only been two weeks. You gotta, you gotta still like temper your expectations a little bit there. Of course, he's like a he's like a late second round pick now in rookie drafts, but like nonetheless, that came up from nobody. Like no one was fucking drafting his ass. And I'd say uh, he's a mid. Draft. I'd say he's a mid to higher. Would you rather him or Zach Moss? I mean, James Robinson for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got you guys have probably convinced me on James Robinson at this point, but it, but I'll let you but know. Sony Michelle should have been coming out of Georgia. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, here's what's gonna happen, right? Like Devin Azigbo and Rykel Armstead, who's always fucking been been a stinker that people love for some reason. By the time they come back, this job is going to be James Robinson. He's or if not already, if not, he's already played himself in the job because like the squeaky wheel has been cleaned. The coaches have said what they need to say. They said this is our guy. We believe in him. They acted on it by fucking letting Fortnite walk because they knew they had this guy waiting in the winds. They said they're gonna use him as a workhorse. He came out. And he is a workhorse. He's getting all the high leverage touches on the goal line. He's getting receptions. He's he, they trust him in there for pass pro. He has prototypical size. He doesn't have world beater speed, but he has enough burst to get chunk yardage, right? And that's and honestly that's all you can ask for for someone like him who is an undrafted free agent. And if he does perform, there's there's no reason for them to draft running back because they are not going to be a super big contender immediately. So the fact that you can have a free running back, a free square running back potentially a free square quarterback opens up the world for them in terms of roster construction. So that's why I think that the long-term prospects of James Robinson is, is currently being undersold. Now, is he a lock to be a starting running back, a starting workhorse for the next two years? I, I wouldn't say that, but I, I've like shifted my tune a little bit from just going from a hold to a actively trying to pursue. Um, and like, honestly, like if I had to give up a second round pick and second round pick and I need a running back, I would be open to it uh, just because, like, even if you just get the one year, even if you just get this year of production from him, I think that's that's worth it because that's, like, you know, potential running back too. And most of the time, like, that's what you dream to get. With the, with the it's it's crazy how much they've – how much trust they've put into him in such small amount of time. Like, typically, you know, you'll see the game where James Robinson maybe gets the workload that he did in week one and then maybe week two, if they didn't really trust him that much, they'd have someone take, you know, six or seven carries from him and things start getting a little – uh, a little weird there, but like they they clearly really really trust this dude. So people are are getting a little bit cute, being like, "Yeah, Ozigbo's coming back or whatever." These guys are gonna start eating into the workload. It's like they're breather backs at best right now, and like they could take their their three carries for seven yards. It's not really gonna affect James Robinson the way he's playing right now. Yeah, yeah. And in two divisional games and games where they're playing from behind, he's put up seventeen and nineteen total opportunities or total touches. Like you don't obviously they're not trying to be like a sixteen and zero team this season. But you're not going out there trying to lose in division. And the fact that they're putting that much confidence in there in him to give him like a 60 to 70% snap share, use him in the receiving game, use him in the running game, it just shows that he is the guy. And if there was anybody on this roster that's gonna steal his job, it's Chris Thompson because Jay Gruden and him have like some crazy love affair that spanned the last 10 years for no reason. So if he's if he's not taking his job, nobody's taking his job. And also I think the running game is also helped out a little bit by LaVisca. Josh Sh- Jacobs is hurt. Yeah. No. Yeah. Also, uh, Alvin Kamara is not hurt, by the way. 
Oh, he's back on the field. Wait, what happened to Jacobs? Josh Jacobs limping off the field. Yeah, damn. Potentially. Yikes. All right. Um, also, that. like, the Jacksonville offensive line has been kind of good. Like, if you're looking at just PFF grades, they're number eight in, in run blocking this year, which is – just the offense is just surprising a whole lot of fucking people, man. And it's uh, it's great to see. I just love, I love to see a guy like Cardinal. Is he's disgusting. I was gonna, what about these weapons, man? Because this becomes like an open discussion for like it, it's tough. You're gonna have to choose the right one. Like you can go pursue James Robinson, you could pursue Chanel, you could pursue uh DJ Chark, but it's like even even us who were like so into DJ Chark, it's like, oh, it's only been two weeks and he's played well, like scored a touchdown the first week, four for eighty four this week. There's still like a little I, I'm feeling a little bit of hesitancy now, but I feel like there are, are weapon legitimate weapons that are taken yeah. away from his share of the pie and like Chark might not be like the clear alpha that we thought he was, right? I mean Keelan Cole's making a fucking comeback for the ages. Keelan Cole is leading the team in target share too, yeah. like eighteen percent. Chark's really not seeing a a big piece of that pie. I'm still all in on Chanel. He has looked fantastic. Um by all by all accounts in terms of carries, like this guy does not go down at all. Like no, if he, he's a fucking animal. He, like there these guys cannot tackle LaVisca Chanel. And he has looked incredible as a rookie. He's been pretty efficient. So I'm still all the way on board with LaVisca Chanel. Um, especially but if but if like someone sent me an offer today, DJ Chark for LaVisca Chanel, I don't know what the fuck I would do, to be honest with you. That's how much I love LaVisca Chanel. Really? In and Dynasty. I, I, in that's Dynasty. So with Chark. No, Dynasty. no, of course. I would, uh, I would probably take Chark. Someone's trying to get uh, LaVisca Chenault for me right now. He's like, just name your price. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> if you're one of those dudes who are just telling me to name my price, like, I could probably oversell the shit out of him. But he's offering me like Nikhil Harry for LaVisca Chenault's trade up. And I'm like, like, dude, we have like a two-year sample size now of Nikhil <laughs> Harry like, not being fucking good at all. Whoa, hold on. Let's not disrespect Nikhil <laughs> Harry. That was dramatic and way over. <laughs> like, just trying to make a point. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you, though. I would not give up LaVisca Chenault for Nikhil no. Harry. No way, no, Jose. Not now. Uh, just given how, how efficient he's been as a rookie and just what we've seen, the way they're using him, I just love everything about it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, pivoting to the New York, uh, new, new uh, sorry, fucking New England Patriots. Favorite Harry, team? Harry's getting volume, man. He, I think Cam, Cam is really, really good for Harry because uh, Cam – Cannot throw down the field, uh, <clears throat> with the exception of that beauty he threw to fucking Julian Edelman, who dropped it, motherfucker. Dude, awesome. but he made a fucking phenomenal catch down the field too. Like, oh yeah, I mean, dude, I, I'm not gonna put that loss on Jules because they're only there because he made some fucking baller ass plays before, but that one hurt. That last um, play, dude, was like really uh, incredible. Like the like you knew the whole country was watching, and everyone knew. Like they lined up, and you're like, okay, <laughs> Cam's getting the ball. Cam's going to run it up the middle. They're either going to stop him or he's getting in. This is, that was like one of the most exciting plays that we've seen in football in a long time. That was fucking awesome. One year. of the most exciting games, period. Yeah. That was a fantastic game. I could not believe we were in a position to actually win the game uh, after, like, after that lead. But, look, the Patriots, everyone left this offense for dead, right? They thought there were no pieces here for sure. And I think we're seeing, like, I mean, in terms of running backs, still fucking fade that shit. But you can get the running back one in Cam Newton. Cam Newton has been – fucking unbelievable right he's the current qb3 overall uh pending monday night football i don't think either guy is gonna actually exceed him so he's the qb3 overall through the two weeks he was a late round qb target i remember in dynasty startups fucking noah sniped me in filet but in every other league like every time i got to the 10th round cam noon auto smash that was before he even got signed because like this is the type of upside that a player like that possesses and he's peppering uh Nikhil harry with a lot of targets now Nikhil harry has to get a little bit more efficient uh, part of that's on Harry. Part of that's on Cam because he's like in those short to intermediate throws. Cam's not really hitting him in stride at all, so it's kind of like he's struggling to kind of get the yak. But if they kind of get on the same page, I think they can be a pretty pretty nice duo. Uh, I think he's a great match for for Cam. He's and Harry's a great match for Cam, and Cam is a great match for him just in terms of their stylistic of play. Cam's not afraid to throw in a tight window, so I'm excited to see how that plays out. No, say what you want to say over there. I know you've been you had a joke cooking up for the last fucking no, five it's, minutes. It's not even a joke. I just remember that pick so vividly because Yannick and I share a team in there, and it was like the ninth round. I'm like, we're going Cam, and he just wrote to me fetal. So I took Cam Newton. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing in the world. We always do that now. Like every every morning, you'll have at least three texts that just say fetal. <laughs> yeah, it's like four a.m. Fetal, and fetal. I text him back. Always oh, fetal. <laughs> what the fuck is fetal? 
but it just you, means like you're like ravishly hungover, like and you're, <laughs> you're in the fetal position. <laughs> you wake up, you say fetal, and everyone knows you had a bad night last night. And then he traded up into the 11, then he took Jared Stidham. I'm like, all right, whatever, we'll take a look at that one. <laughs> That's so good. probably in like a three week fetal position, but oh, yeah, Cam Newton looked like an animal. He's basically discount Dak Prescott at this point. He's just running in every single opportunity from inside like the five yard line. And I know you said he can't throw down, downfield at all, Mike, but he's still looking like he can actually kind of sling the rock, which he couldn't. He do looks at fucking all sharp, last. intermediate yeah. man. And that, like last, yeah, last night's game, it was like the opposite of every problem we've had for Cam uh, for most of the years. He's he's usually a little bit erratic with those throws, but like they have dialed good. in what they need to do with Cam, and he looks good over the short and intermediate. I just like don't know if the game, their game plan, lends itself to to Nikhil Harry, but maybe that's good. Maybe like not putting too much on Nikhil Harry's plate right now is like going to help him develop a little bit better over the long run. Maybe yeah. I'm just like fucking making shit up right now, but I don't know. <laughs> like I like how the offense is rolling and yeah, I, I have a lot of came and redraft and it's uh, been a phenomenal investment. Yeah. Also, yeah. I don't think that they're going to be in many game scripts where they're like trying to play catch up all game because Russell Wilson is just one of one. He's what does he call himself? Mr. Unlimited. He yeah. is he might have been underselling himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might have been under. Hold on. Incredible. Let's talk about DK Metcalf, bro. Just Ooh. absolutely fucking fathering Stephon Gilmore on that. <laughs> Dude, team. that was insane when I how saw many, that. How many? How many? I mean, he's a legit wide receiver one in Dynasty now, right? Like, you have to be drafting Probably, the top yeah. 15 in the minimum. I, I, like, just yeah. locked up with Wilson for the next fucking yeah. next. I mean, let's bring back the discussion we had in the prior bunk bed breakdowns. R- Calvin Ridley versus DK Metcalf. I mean, you guys, wow. had, you guys had DK Metcalf. I had Calvin Ridley. I mean, it, it, that, that discussion is going to rage on all season long. I mean, Calvin Ridley is going Holy off. DK shit. Metcalf is – DK Metcalf, we know we can see, like, what, what he can be, especially yeah. in Dynasty, once he really takes over that true role. Like, I don't think Calvin Ridley has the upside, like, down the line. But, man, from a fantasy perspective, fuck, that's a tough – Dude, it, a tough it's like ima- – but fl- imagine flipping their situation. Like, okay, imagine just flipping the, – the reason I like Metcalf more is because – the ceiling is really, really, really there. Like he has the Julio type ceiling. I think he's not as refined, Calvin obviously. Has the locket ceiling. Like, they're basically yeah, but, just like flipping the wide receiver one. The, the way they're running their routes now, and I was looking at it on like NFL Next Gen stats, it's literally just like locket, just going like this, just going like this across the fucking field, like just doing jabs and Metcalf, like <laughs> boom, 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 every single play. And it's like basically Atlanta runs two times as many passing plays every game as Seattle does. And like that's why I feel like Ridley's really popping off statistically. But for the long term, I don't know how much you can buy into that. Because, like, how, how much longer is, like, Dirk Cutter going to be here and Dan Quinn going to be in Atlanta? Like, they should be hopefully gone by the end of this week. But they're not going to be. But, <laughs> ho- you know, it's going to be the year probably they'll see it out. And then what happens if they fuck up and bring in another head coach that, you know, just, just sucks again? And that's probably going to happen. And I don't, I don't know. Like, Ridley looks fucking awesome. But as long as Julio's there, I'd probably still prefer Metcalf. Yeah, I, I, think, wanna... I think Julio being there is good for Ridley. Like, I, I honestly believe that. I think Julio being there is what opens up all his opportunity for Calvin Ridley. Uh, I mean, he's going to be the wide receiver one overall for this week. Yeah, he is. He definitely the part is. Too. Yeah. The uh, thing is, like, I don't want to discount any t- type of touchdown, but I think, like, two of his four were just, like, wide open. The cornerback's on the ground. But he's also, like, a really good route runner. He's going to find himself yeah. in those situations a lot, and he's done that the past two seasons. So I'm not discounting that at all. As for Dynasty, I mean, it's a three-year age, it's a three-year age gap. Calvin Ridley is basically 30 at this point, which is <laughs> 25. And Russell Wilson's younger. He's locked up for a long time. I don't know. I just – DK Metcalf just looks so good out he there, does. and like, he I don't does. know, he I'm like incredible. Speech. He's just an animal. He looks like a real, yeah. Like, he, in my eyes, he's gone from just this athletic specimen to like a really dominant football player. Like, he looks really good at the wide receiver position. Yeah. Even I'm that like, curl route that he ran, and then he just turned up field and like put Stephon Gilmore into a baby stroller and like pushed him down the sideline. Like, <laughs> that was absolutely menacing. You yeah. shouldn't do that to a grown man. Yeah, dude. I mean, it was incredible to watch. When I saw him like burn, any anytime someone like makes Stephon Gilmore look foolish, I pay attention. That's why I bought in on Devonta Parker after last year. I was like, holy shit, this guy just fucking took Stephon Gilmore to town, and and DK did that. And the fact that they even had Gilmore on DK tells me a lot as well, in just terms of, like how Bill sees it and how how the defense sees him. Like he's, he's gonna be incredible. But Tyler Lockett, we cannot discount Tyler Lockett because he is also incredible. Just if they continue to let Russ cook, I mean, this is a this is a low key potential for like two top performing wide receivers on the same team that we did not see coming. Lockett's gonna go six for seventy five until like two thousand twenty nine. <laughs> Next nine years, you got six for seventy five in your wide receiver two spot. 
Don't don't worry about it. Yeah. Lock is just a, a, you don't have to worry about his longevity because he doesn't like do anything that's crazy that would put that in danger. Yeah, yeah he'll get a touchdown is, every other game. <laughs> this is really reminiscent of that Super Bowl where it was like Doug Baldwin, and then they got that guy Chris Matthews out of Foot Locker, and he put up like 110 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> that's like basically the wide receiver one and two in there now. What else? What else you got to talk about? We got uh, dude. Do you guys play DFS? I no. tried. Oh, dude, I played. It was a good week for DFS for me. I went five for six. Uh, I usually cash. I do three lineups cash. And uh, on DraftKings, I do three lineups on uh, on Vandal. So normally, if you like, if you hit four of six, then you cash, right? And if you like go two of two of six, then you basically lose. But yeah, last week was a good week. I went five of six, even though I started Adams in fucking like every lineup. Oh, no. but the savior was I started Mike Evans over Amari Cooper, who was the chalk for that week. Um, so that saved me. But yeah, man, you actually get in DFS. I'm I'm starting to like DFS more than I like season long, to be honest. Damn. Um, I just fuck DFS, free lineups and but how about uh, wait in the in the what it do league? I just realized I had the Waller car stack, and they put me up fifty four points right now, and I came back and beat Scott. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind. We're not selling Barkley. We ain't selling fucking nobody. Don't don't send offers. No one's on the. I just block declined your Leonard Fournette for Saquon Barkley trade too. God damn. Wait, but wait, no, but if you're competing, that means you want it. Yeah, I know. I realized as soon as I said that, it didn't make, <laughs> didn't make sense. I was just excited. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's epic. Dude, I, yeah. I, I think I might be, uh, I think I lost my Scott Fishball matchup, but I'm, I'm, I am think I'm like fucking 14 and one or 15 oh, and one wow. here in my leagues. Yeah. We're fucking like we're shit. down by like 0. 0.6 in the listener league because he has Josh Jacobs. No, oh, motherfucker, dude. Damn That's it. Tough. I want Someone to just fucking... ran in a touchdown. I think J- Jalen Rashard or some fucking nobody took a touchdown. Really? Yeah. That's it huge. Was because I'm, run. It was Rashard, yeah. Uh, that's, that's huge. Um, dude, I'm actually doing – I'm doing hot in the Scott Fishbowl, man. I'm, I'm 2-0. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got uh, – let's, let's check out my lineup here. I got Patrick Mahomes, Ryan Tannehill, obviously crushing it for me right there. And then I got Kareem Hunt, who went fucking ham this week. I picked up James Robinson off the waiver wire for like 11 bucks before week one. So he's going ham for me. Dude, but I, I forgot to put in my down. fucking waivers. I, I always forget to put in the waivers in Scott Fish. I wanted, I wanted Robinson and just didn't put anything in like a fucking GG, asshole. Bro. Yeah, and then I got J.K. Dobbins. I got uh, a couple of like other fri- – oh, Cam Akers and then some other fringe running backs. And then I had Julian Edelman put up a fucking ham week for me. Uh, Tyler Boyd went pretty well too, and they got Mark Andrews and Dallas Goddard. I think I have a good chance. My team's like uh, my, pretty set up. Yeah, we 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 slapped in week one, and then uh, fucking uh, I had George Kittle, Chris Godwin. So whoever mm-hmm. I was going against put up like over two hundred points. So I didn't really have a <laughs> fucking chance this week. But th- I have digs on that team. I had Kareem oh, nice. Hunt, Chris Carson, Antonio Gibson for like a fourteenth rounder. But you know what fucking killed me? It was Kittle round one, and then I went. Like Breeze and Brady, I was excited about getting them early, so I think they were like two of my first five picks, and I just and I I got Minshew in like the eleventh, and he's been by far and away my best fucking quarterback. <laughs> I haven't been playing him at all, <laughs> like a fucking <laughs> asshole. Just poor management. That that's why I don't like the Scott Fishbowl because like it's it's like the the, the league I pay least attention to, and like it, <laughs> and it shows it shows really fucking quickly because you have to make moves. Ball? No, it's not best ball. It's a it's a managed team, and like the scoring is so fucking odd that like you have to pay attention to. To what you're yeah. actually doing to to do well in it yeah you definitely have to pay attention um i don't even like setting my lineup in my home league so you can only imagine yeah, <laughs> yeah how are you doing in your auto drafted league <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's real rough for me i had will fuller put me up a donut mark andrews with like nothing <laughs> joe mixon and Kenyon drake they're doing like the little handshake emoji like just garbage in between them like it, it's real it's real ugly i'm zero and two for like the first time ever i think and i i think that just dictates that the computer is not as smart as as i am <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's a that's a good spot to end it uh, for this week. Hopefully, you guys found some interesting nuggets in there. We're going to keep it casual going forward in this episode, but we got big facts coming in the main channel on a weekly basis. We got Market Watch Mondays every week. We got five. Uh, we got Noah's uh, Noah segment coming in every week as well. So make sure you tune into tune into our channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like, thumbs up, comment. Tell us we're shit. Tell us we're good. Shit on Noah's. I don't know what that is, fucking rape stash, but there's a lot. There's a lot. We had like yeah. 50 minutes of like no slander. <laughs> shit on that if you want to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, far uh, too long. There's <laughs> a whole lot yeah. of gang shit going on here. <laughs> we didn't even talk about Justin Herbert today. I love it. 
Yeah. Oh, we didn't even talk oh, yeah, about dude, Herbert. We, yeah, let's, let's go a couple minutes talking about Justin Herbert. Dude, you know what? It, it really would have been a fucked up week if the Chargers walked away 2-0. Like, I'm honestly really glad they didn't because y'all don't deserve that. I'm sorry. All right, that's the end of this week's episode. I'm real happy that we lost. Uh, Fuck you. I'm like, I'm over here as a Falcons fan sitting here. We just lost the most pathetic loss, like possibly in the history of the NFL. Like, that might have been the worst loss of, of I don't all. understand that onside yeah. kick. Why didn't they just Except pick it up? Except for our 28 to 3 fucking Super Bowl loss. So yeah, honestly, it was the worst off. loss since the and the episode. Three. Yeah, and the fucking episode. <laughs> Fuck off. The Atlanta Falcons Fuck. have the two worst throws in the history of the NFL. You hate to see it. Um, I mean, yeah, but before we log off, let's, let's, let's give credit where it's due. It's a tight end one converted to quarterback after week one. Mike, Justin the video's Herbert. been ended. You're just talking just about it. it. <laughs> <laughs> We've just ended Herbert. the video 40 times. <laughs> Justin Herbert. He looked good. He looked, he he looked, looked great. Good. He looked great. He looked good, but, but that did not stop Anthony Lynn from coming out today and saying <laughs> that Tyrod Taylor gives him the best chance of winning. And he's going back in the lineup when he comes back. That is not good news. It's not what you want to hear. But Shining Star is, look, if you guys got Justin Herbert, draft him at value after we shout on him all year long. Uh, looks like looks like you're in for a, a little shiny coin there. And more importantly, let's take one minute to shit on all the Austin Eckler premature victory lappers because he is an absolute stud. What I will say though, it was it was bothered me that Joshua Kelly outcarried him. Bro. Because Joshua Kelly broke one tackle and Austin Eckler broke ten. Joshua Kelly obviously was way less efficient on the ground, so it didn't make much sense to me. But as we saw with Tyrod Taylor and Justin Herbert. Anthony Lynn loves to give it to players that are not good. So I'm sure we'll see that continue. And that makes Joshua Kelly relevant for fantasy because we care about volume at the end of the day. But Austin Eckler came out, got the target. So, you know, hopefully Tyrod Taylor doesn't stick around for too much longer. Because, I loved it. Uh, I loved it for, for Eckler. If Herbert's in there, I, I, oh, yeah. I assume it's going to be really at least what we saw for Eckler. This Because this was like the bounce back week because we thought they were going to be trailing. Like, how fucking good is this Chargers defense? They're I feel like fucking imagine they had Derwin James. Dude, I'm saying, yeah. like, I feel like every year we're like, oh, this Chargers defense is so good. They lose all of their players to injury, and then they're still just, like, really good. And I'm like, like, what is this fucking Dude, the alien pass defense? Is disgusting. And the cover yeah. is- Ingram on the pass rush side. So right? good. And then they got Hayward on the outside, Chris Harris Jr. in the slot. Like, the pass rush plus the coverage combo is what makes, like, defenses super fucking legit. And, it's like, ridiculous. people can't pass yeah. them. So, yeah, so I'm excited as an as someone who owns a lot of Eckler, like what we saw from Justin Herbert. And I, I can't fucking imagine they put Tyrod Taylor back in, bro. Like, there's no <laughs> way. Literally a fireable offense. I have to imagine <laughs> that they're going to the ride Chargers, this thing out. They're like, going to put Tyrod Taylor back in, and they're about to lose, <laughs> like, 15 straight. Dude, Tyrod's <laughs> just so – it's so brutal, man. Like, you want to root for Tyrod like you do. Like, you like him as a person, and you want to say he's, like, a, a good football player, you know, but – Dude, he just brings nothing. He brings nothing except leadership. Like, put his ass on the get, let let him be a coach. Honestly, fucking promote him to head coach <laughs> in the middle of the game in the middle of the season. He'd probably be a better coach at that point. But like, no, no, no fucking pizzazz to the offense, man. We need we need Herb God out there. Herbs and spices back out there for quarterback. Let's go. <laughs> they were moving it, but yeah, Josh Kelly just seems to be the goal line back there, which isn't great for Austin Eckler, but he's also a guy who can break like an eighty yard touchdown any touch of the ball. So. As long as Her- Herbert's out there and he's getting the volume between the 20s, he has the potential to break a big one. He's firmly a, wa- a running back one. I'd rather have him than Joe Mixon. Can you, would you rather have him, him or Kenyon Drake the rest of the season? Mm. Ooh, that's close. That's uh, I think I'd rather have Kenyon Drake. I think I would take Drake too because I trust that offense a lot more. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I tr- I'm leaning Drake. I, tr- yeah. I trust the offense a lot more. Um, with Kelly, yeah, it's it, with Kelly. Like, I'm not surprised he has a role. Uh, they, you know, they obviously wanted someone to like bang it up the middle and take. Like that's that's a lot of the reason why he averaged, you know, like 2.9 yards per carry or something because they were like third and one and a lot of those kind of shit carries. But he did exactly what they did. But like, or he did exactly what they wanted him to do in that role. But like, 23 carries is a little fucking obsessive. Like, you know, mm-hmm. calm down and like give four of those back to Austin <laughs> Eckler and let him do his job. You just paid him about 40 million dollars. So that that was kind of annoying to see. Yeah, or just keep them and just give Eckler the targets. I'm down for that, too. Um, I'm down for lower carries for Eckler. But, yeah, Eckler on limited touches. Like, I think perfect thing for Eckler is if he gets, like, 12 to 15 carries on the ground and then, like, four to six targets per game. And then, like, maybe they get, like, some of the goal line work. And then he'll easily return the RB1 value just because his efficiency is incredible. And, like, dude, if I see – I mean, hopefully – we're not going to see any more, but, like, over the – of course, the past week, the amount of fucking, like, Austin Eckler – is not hey, good and like Philip Rivers another tug sorry nice and Philip Rivers 
and Naheem Hines and Phillip Rivers made Eckler. Like those types of comps drive me fucking crazy because Austin Eckler is an incredibly good football player, and Naheem Hines is literally Kalen Balaj but catches passes and doesn't run. So, like, you cannot make those types of comparisons. Please respect the god Austin Eckler, <laughs> and I think the concerns are lifted, especially in Dynasty. If you have Eckler in Dynasty, get fucking excited because we saw what it looks like with Justin Herbert, the god. Yeah, people were buying low. I just saw Curtis Pratt Patrick make a tweet, and he said – uh he traded Saquon Barkley for Ezekiel Elliott and Austin Eckler last week. Like I, I saw don't... that, and I was like, "Dude, that's that's like a, an absurd yeah. fucking trade." Like, yeah, even last week, you're like, what the fuck is going on there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I saw that tweet too. He made he made off with two fucking steals in those trades. But dynasty is a lot of luck when it comes to because value. I feel like fluctuates in the public eye so rapidly from week to week. Let's finish. Let's actually finish. All right, that's all we got for you. Hope you guys enjoyed. No, Catch no you. we don't need that bullshit outro. Just fucking cut right, it. Let's, 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 <laughs> fuck you guys. Fuck everybody. <laughs> Again, just how we began is how we finish. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>